A new report reveals China's contracts with U.S. universities worth more than a hundred million dollars. One lawmaker is calling it part of Beijing's plan to overtake the U.S. Taiwan pushes to become a member of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, but will it be allowed to join? A German national living under Shanghai's lockdown says China's system sucks. He says children in kindergarten are more organized. We hear from one of our viewers who is living under a Chinese lockdown. As a foreigner living in the country, he tells us about what surprised him most. And for those watching our full episode, China's national anthem gets censored by the country's own social media. That's as some Chinese citizens use the song to criticize Beijing's policy instead of to praise the ruling party. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. Federal data reveals a hundred million dollars tied China to U.S. universities and colleges. Senator Marco Rubio says it's Beijing's plan to overtake the United States. More than two dozen U.S. universities were found to have financial ties with China. That's according to a new report. The report says China-based entities, including the Chinese regime, secured contracts worth $120 million with American colleges in 2021. The true extent of the issue is likely far broader. Senator Marco Rubio criticized the agreement, calling it part of the Chinese Communist Party's efforts to supplant the United States as the world's superpower. Rubio wrote in an email, the Chinese Communist Party is exploiting our education and research institutes to steal our secrets and gain influence. Adding that, this is all part of Beijing's plan to overtake the United States as the world's most powerful nation. The Chinese entities tied to the U.S. universities were frequently left unnamed in the university's reporting of foreign gifts. The largest financial tie detected was between the University of Houston and an unnamed private Chinese entity. Their agreement involved over $30 million, while the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign made four agreements. Their combined value exceeds $26 million. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT, also had multiple agreements worth more than $14 million. None of the universities responded to requests for comment by airtime. The most well-known component of the China-funded program is the Confucius Institute. The Chinese Communist regime says the institute aims to teach Chinese language and culture worldwide. But many are concerned that the institute spread the Communist Party's propaganda and restricted academic freedom. Out of the over 120 Confucius Institutes in the U.S., only more than a dozen of them are still open. As Putin claimed that Russia has withstood the unprecedented pressure, China told Russia on Tuesday it will continue to increase what it called strategic coordination between the two nations, regardless of international volatility. According to a statement, China's vice foreign minister gave this assurance to the Russian ambassador to China. He cited the almost 30 percent increase in China-Russia trade in the first three months of this year as evidence of the resilience of cooperation between the two countries. China has refrained from condemning Russia's invasion into Ukraine. CIA director and former U.S. ambassador to Russia, William Burns, has criticized the Chinese regime for its stance, saying it was a silent partner in Putin's aggression toward Ukraine. The United Nations says there have been more than 2,000 civilian deaths since the war started. Taiwan is pressing the U.S. for inclusion into Washington's upcoming Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, or IPEF. That's according to a senior Taiwanese minister's office on Tuesday. The minister has urged U.S. Representative Catherine Tai on the issue. Last month, Tai refused to say whether the plan would include Taiwan, spurring Senate criticism that excluding the island would be a missed opportunity. Taiwan has voiced its desire to be a full member of the IPEF in an effort to counter Beijing's increasing coercion in the region. According to Reuters, citing an insider, Taiwan reiterated that desire during virtual talks on Monday.
Though a statement from Thai's office didn't mention the framework, saying the two sides talked about bilateral trade and matters of common concern. Taiwan expressed gratitude to U.S. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on Tuesday for speaking up for Taiwan. During an interview with Fox News on Sunday, McCarthy urged the U.S. to offer immediate help and improve Taiwan's military. He suggested that President Biden should learn from the Ukraine war and act to handle a potential Beijing invasion of Taiwan. He said Taiwan has been waiting more than a year for weapons they've already purchased to defend themselves. Let democracies defend themselves. This is a lesson we should learn today. McCarthy's comments follows a U.S. congressional delegation's two-day visit to Taiwan. During the U.S.-Taiwan talks last Friday, China held a military drill near the island. The same day, China's foreign ministry spokesman accused Taiwan and the U.S. of colluding with each other. He also said comparing the situation in Ukraine with Taiwan was an attempt to confuse the public. Former Japanese Prime Minister Abe is taking aim at U.S. strategic ambiguity. He says Washington's refusal to clarify how it would respond to threats against Taiwan must end, and that the risks Taiwan is facing show similarities to those of Ukraine. That includes how Taiwan doesn't have formal military allies, and how there's a large military power gap between Taiwan and China. What's more, Taiwan cannot rely on the United Nations to mediate conflicts since China is a permanent veto-welding member of the UN Security Council, meaning China has the power to reject resolutions. Abe says it's time to change the U.S.'s long-term strategic ambiguity towards Taiwan. He points out that while Ukraine is considered a sovereign nation, Taiwan isn't. Beijing claims that Taiwan is part of China despite the island's independent leadership and constitution. Neither the U.S. nor Japan has official diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Because of that, Abe says Chinese leaders could claim invasion of Taiwan as a suppression of anti-government activities in its own region, meaning an invasion wouldn't violate international law. Abe says that kind of logic has made the U.S.'s strategic ambiguity towards the island untenable. Shanghai's lockdown left 26 million residents struggling with loss of income, irregular food supplies and family separations since early March. As of now, over 16 million are still barred from leaving their homes. But a city health official said Wednesday that over 7 million can now return to their factory jobs or take a walk outside. That's 2 million more than last week. The city's public transportation remains closed, and only approved vehicles are allowed on the road, though some essential workers are still allowed to move around relatively freely. The police, delivery drivers, neighborhood committee members, and health care workers. On Tuesday, Shanghai reported over 16,000 new infections, all asymptomatic and local. That's a decline of nearly 1,000 from the previous day. And two of Shanghai's 16 districts reportedly saw no new cases outside quarantine areas. But due to the Chinese regime's history of underreporting cases and lack of transparency, the real number could be much higher. Under China's strict zero COVID-19 lockdown, many Shanghai residents are experiencing a severe food crisis. One of them told us she didn't receive the food deliveries that authorities promised they would supply. But after reaching out for other help online, she started getting threats. Let's take a look. They forced you to buy expensive groceries online and even those are unavailable. The city government shut down all the stores. Now we can't even go to work. Where can I get money? I have to pay rent. By the time the lockdown is over, we may have starved to death inside our house. Someone in Miss Liu's building tested positive for COVID-19 but could not be transferred to a quarantine center immediately. Because of that, Liu and her husband decided to spend a night on the street to avoid contracting the virus. To protect her identity, we gave her a pseudonym. We don't dare to go home because the COVID-19 patient still lives in the house. We stayed outside all night last night but couldn't fall asleep at all because of the mosquitoes. Liu said she called several emergency hotlines, but no one would help her. Later, she sought out help online. But not long after, she says she was threatened by the residential committee under the Chinese Communist Party. 
and was forced to stop. They make us do very frequent virus testing. Our primary concern is getting enough food. What's the point of doing COVID-19 tests over and over again? Shanghai has mandated round after round of virus testing for all 26 million of its residents, aiming to detect and remove all infected patients from residential areas. But locals have complained that the policy looks to meet authorities' political needs rather than looking out for the city's people. A foreigner living under China's lockdown says the country's pandemic prevention system is broken. He's being forced to go to a quarantine camp almost two weeks after testing positive. NTD's Don Ma has the story. A German national living under Shanghai's lockdown says China's system, quote, sucks. He said it over a phone call with Chinese authorities. They left us here for 12 days, then they decided to take us. Then they send us back home after leaving us there in the cold for five hours. This is f***ing ridiculous. This is insane. Here's some context for what's going on. The German national tested positive for the virus on April 3rd. Then almost two weeks later, he gets transferred to a quarantine camp. Now keep in mind that in two weeks, most people would have already recovered. So he gets sent to the quarantine camp, but for some reason, authorities reject him. So he gets sent back home. And now, Shanghai authorities want to take him to the camp again. So he's refusing to go until he's retested. And get your boss, tell him I tell him he sucks, tell him the system sucks, tell him to send the CDC officer here and take a f- new test with me. Like they and then we can talk. Your system is the most ridiculous that I've ever experienced in my entire life. My children at kindergarten are more organized than this f- crap here. It seems like he's not the only one experiencing this. He said in the phone recording that he knows of others that also went through the same thing. They leave us here with eight people, corona positive, for 15 days. We're all fine, and then they decide to take us? What sort of ridiculous rule is that? That's ridiculous. There is no logic to this. The recording of the call has since gone viral on Chinese social media platforms. The full recording of the call has also been posted on YouTube and Twitter. Don Ma, NTD News. Next, we'd like to share the story of one of our viewers who wrote to us as a foreigner living in China under lockdown. He said he's been watching our show daily to get true information, something hard to find inside China. He does this through a special kind of software, which helps overcome the regime's internet blockade. For safety reasons, we'll keep him anonymous. He told us there are two groups of people in his city, the first group making up about 90 percent of locals, still blindly supports everything the Chinese regime does. The other 10 percent want to get back to work and feed their families. They seem to have questions about what authorities are doing to them. He said he finds it surprising that so many people continue to support the policies. But he also explains why. That is, he was never indoctrinated by the Chinese Communist Party's education system. He also pointed out that people in his city know very little about COVID-19. He said they don't understand it's a respiratory illness that jumps from person to person and attacks the lungs. Neither do they understand the danger of crowds or dining in restaurants. What's more, they are unaware that Chinese-made vaccines perform poorly compared to foreign-made doses. He believes the lack of COVID-19 literacy is intentional because authorities don't want people thinking too much about the origins of the pandemic. Instead, he says authorities feel the most important thing is for people to trust the regime in everything. Confined to his home for weeks, he fortunately has enough food, but said he got a new appreciation for what the Jews experienced in World War II. He went on to say that locals don't question it when their neighbors disappear and are taken to quarantine camps. He said he's pretty sure if he disappeared, no one would come looking for him because there's so much blind trust in the Communist Party. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow.
A tipping point for world powers. America's influence in Latin America is slipping to the Chinese regime. But why is having access to the Southern Hemisphere so important? In this special report, we look at how the Chinese regime has quietly taken over control in many countries, how trade has won Beijing leverage in political, diplomatic, and military spheres across the region, and how Americans' daily lives could be turned inside out. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe so inspiring it changes your life so beautiful you wish it would never end when that happens it's something not to be missed shen yun an all-new production every year The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.